invite you to listen to the following lecture by Supreme Master Ching Hai titled, Your Destiny is in Your Own Hands, given on March 20th, 1996, in San Jose, California, USA. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. So that you can see me, not that you have the plow. All right, brothers? Yeah. When I was young... You still are. Yeah, yeah. Inside, I'm coming around. I when see. I was young, I noticed sometimes I'd be riding in, uh, or on a bicycle or walking, and I'd hear somebody talk, but they weren't talking, they were thinking. Because when I turned my head, I knew they were there, and I could recognize it. Like it's telepathy. See, I see. And then we're ha there's a lot of problems in in this California with people having that problem. They said they're hearing voices, uh -huh. and yes. nobody believes them. Yes, yes, yes. And then when I put them in there, they say, "Are you hearing voices?" And to me, I think what this problem is, their centers or their mind is picking up telepathy, and they don't know how or what it's doing for them. Mm -hmm. They're frightened. And it's out of control. In other words, their perception to tune in to what someone's thinking right. isn't correct. But it, the center opens up and they go, well, who's talking to me? Yes. What kind of thinking normally you pick up? Negative, positive, or neutral, or uh, just anything? Gossip. Gossip. <laughs> Can a person have the ability to read somebody else's thinking, hear their thinking? Can. Okay, no okay, well, yes, I know, but when they hear their thinking, but not know the light and powers beyond, through the third eye and have this perception, like, oh, I can hear that person think, I can hear this, I believe in God because God comes through every and everybody, and have no knowledge of the realms beyond. Sure. And, and then be entrapped in that. And, and yes, I didn't yes. know this all my life. But there's still something wrong with these people that read my life. <laughs> you know, they eat a steak, they don't meditate, and they can pick up on me. They wonder why I'm so frantic at times, and my frantic is, is they're bothering me, you know? If you don't work on the road within, mm. you're going to be sorry when you're floating out there sure, with, sure, with a sure. low realm, right? Sure, sure. The question was originally about telepathy and mm -hmm. the lack of understanding these or things, people being satisfied with what they these believe. These things exist, all right, yeah, brother? That's what I wanted to know. But they are not the uh, highest level of consciousness, yeah? yeah? yeah. It's just at the mind level. It's like one computer, you know, communicate to, like internet style, yeah? And uh, actually we have internet inside, and some people can make use of that, some people cannot, and that's all there is to it. And if we communicate with each other at the mind level, it's possible. People can train themselves into telepathy or hypnotism and things like that, huh? And these have nothing or sometimes not uh, have much to do with the light and the sound which uh, uplifts you to the most high. Yeah? So uh, actually sometimes we have this kind of uh, ability. Yeah? When our mind is clear, you know, and not uh, focus on a particular anything, then uh, sometimes we pick up the wavelengths from other people's thinking, just like a radio. Hmm? So nothing big deal. Just uh, forget it. Uh -huh. don't, don't let it trouble me. Yes, yes, so don't pay attention. And uh, if you meditate or if you know the meditation of any kind, just then switch your mind, switch your concentration to the holy names or the mantra, whatever you are at that moment, and forget about this uh, gossiping. It's do you no good? Mm. I'm embarrassed to ask a simple question, but I'm going oh, to ask sorry, it anyway. I don't worry. Uh, and I know I'm new and I'm anxious, and I'm I'm so um, I'm so excited about it. But I'm having more trouble doing the uh, the Kuan Yin than I am the, the uh, focusing on the light. The sound is is more difficult for me to get into meditating on the sound. Why? Uh, why? I don't know why. 
It just is more difficult. I just can't seem to do it as easily. Uh huh. Then you try to do as long as you can, step by step, huh? And the next day you increase the one minute or two, and the next day one more until you reach your desired time. Oh, right. thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Sometimes it's difficult in the beginning, huh? and the mind keeps always interfering and telling you to, <laughs> to do other things. Just try your best, okay? Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's so serious, my God. Have some laugh, okay? <laughs> you want me to tell you a joke? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. All right. You have to be happy yourself. Don't always rely on me. Yes. I always spoon fed you, and that's no good, right? Brother, you have to do yourself. Being okay. around disturbed people that I don't understand why they don't seek for a better life. Just concentrate on your own level of consciousness, yeah? See yeah. what you want, and that's important. Yeah, okay. And you will influence people if yourself are yes. pure, yeah. all right? I have a lot of people that's, uh, in the neighborhood that still remember anything I've ever done, and the way they want to change it is they try to throw this talk about Jesus at me. And <laughs> Somebody to me, got to help otherwise. <laughs> like uh, when Jesus said, in the house of the Father there are many mansions, but he didn't say anybody was in there. And then Moses left before Jesus, so he must be up there somewhere, you know. Okay, so I, Go find him. I need to build my altar. You can tell my altar is a little altered. <laughs> See, I got to take care, I got to take care and use my mind. So if I work, I start, and I start finding the questions and problems within that I didn't solve. Like, Good. what am I going to do? So I got to get a job again, so I'm working at that. Thank you. Yes. I've just been initiated um, last week. I have trouble identifying which is the true light and the light from my imagination. Because when I close my eyes, sometimes I don't meditate and I still see light. Oh, yeah? Uh -huh. Is that your problem? Yeah. <laughs> well, my, my problem is, can you tell me... You don't me? want the light or what? No, I do, but I want to know which is the light from my imagination and which... Do you the think the light are from imagination? Can I sit here and just imagine there are light in this room? No, when I close my eyes. The same thing. <laughs> even when you close your eyes, it's even worse. <laughs> you could not see the light if there is not the light there, okay? Light is light. There's no imagined light. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, brothers, it is very good that even if we don't try to concentrate, we see the light. It's supposed to be like that, all right? Just that sometimes uh, people uh, don't get that, huh? So I have to tell them to sit down and meditate. But uh, normally when you see the light, you should not uh, analyze anymore, okay? Just enjoy it. It will make you feel better and wiser <coughs> and more happy. Huh? Nothing wrong, huh? <laughs> Light, all right? Some people complain they don't have light, some people complain they have too much light. <laughs> what shall we do? <laughs> no more question? Good, my God, what a good audience. Then we think uh, we just go home sleep. Ah, uh, okay? All right? <laughs> ten o'clock already? Not possible, is it? Is it ten o'clock? Oh, gosh. I thought you would have wanted to ask me many questions since you haven't seen me for a long time, but you have been enlightened, so it's good. Huh? You're satisfied, huh? My question is, um, what would you suggest uh, if someone has been hurt? Somebody been hurt? Yes. Right. Emotionally? Uh, emotionally. Yes. What, what is, a, a, quite seriously, a good way to recover? Do you have any words about that? Uh -huh. It depends. It depends on what kind of emotional uh, suffering that person has gone through. Could you be more particular? Well, uh, being abandoned. Abandoned by a lover? Yeah, and a friend. Girlfriend or friend. wife, something? Friend. friend or girlfriend? Girlfriend. Friend. Girlfriend. It's different than friend. <laughs> yeah, because uh, it hurts more. <laughs> okay. Time. Time will heal everything. 
go out and see better friends, okay? Talk to them about your problem. And uh, go to dancing, yeah? Go where it uh, comforts you. But I tell you what, even if you go to heaven, it will not comfort you, <laughs> just time. This is the most suffering thing that a uh, human has to go through, when a, a loved and trusted one just left, uh, sometimes with no reason, sometimes with apparently superficial reasons, sometimes there's maybe a logical reasons, but whatever reason, <laughs> we suffer. So only time can heal this, provided we want to be healed. Sometimes at the hour of suffering, seems like no medicine, nothing can comfort our soul, but it will, I assure you. None of the ordinary human being would be able to escape this kind of uh, experience. Because in, this, in life we have to have many experiences in order to grow, in order to uh, mature, to master our own destiny, our emotion, our intellect, our wisdom, and uh, our thinking even. Yeah? So this is one of the painful experiences that human has to go through in order to master the uh, most difficult emotion. And no, no one is spared of this. So you are not alone. And to just take it as a, some experience, yeah? Suppose that person die, you lose her anyhow. Hmm? Or suppose you die, you lose her anyhow. Or suppose you have somebody else better and you leave her anyhow. So one way or another, somebody lose, somebody gain. Or nothing lost, nothing gain. She left you for somebody else? <laughs> no? No just left you. Maybe she come back, you never know. Hmm. I know all this experience. It's awful. Still we have to go through. It's terrible, huh? It's terrible. More than sickness, more than starvation, and more than toothache. <laughs> Heart is terrible. I wish I could help you. I wish I could erase immediately this painful memory in your heart, but you are the only one that can do that. And I don't want to take this blessing away from you, because as soon as you heal yourself, you became stronger. Next time, you don't get hurt so easily. You get again next time, don't worry about that. It's not the last. <laughs> it might be the first, but it might not be the last. And uh, you know, each time you grow stronger and stronger, and later you know this is just nothing. Yeah? You will have more detachment for this ephemeral uh, pleasure that the body and the mind like to cling to, which is called love, which is not really love, just a part of true, great, everlasting love. Of course, it is very nice if we can include this small portion of universal love into our life, then our life would become more beautiful, yeah? more kind of meaningful. We, we were more flamboyant, we were more happy, <laughs> things like that. But nevertheless, there are many other things that we can comfort our soul with and we can be occupied with. Yeah? I try to do something helpful to other people at the moment and try to see through their suffering. But nevertheless, you have to learn your own way. No one can help. Even if I have thousands of experience, I cannot prevent you from falling in love and getting hurt when you fall in out of love. <laughs> and this is the cause and consequences. All right? We have to be responsible for whatever action and reaction we take in this life. If we fall in love, we have to expect the best and the worst, because both will happen. Right? Sometimes you have the best and sometimes you have the worst. 
Oh, first you have the best, and later you have the worst. <laughs> so you have to know beforehand, before you fall in love to somebody, you have to be clear that are you going to take this opportunity, to take this risk or not. If you're afraid of pain, then don't fall in love. That's my advice. <laughs> And if you think love is exciting, you know, worth it to try, then take risk. No one can guarantee anything, <laughs> especially the love business. Yeah, <laughs> not even the master or the Buddha can write you a guarantee certificate, say you lived uh, happily ever after. I doubt it. All the story about the prince and princess. They just write the beginning, they did not write the end. <laughs> so, so all of us children are getting, you know, cheated. <laughs> and we always think, you know, Cinderella and all this kind of stuff. Wait until they got together, or they got a few children, you watch and see. <laughs> so actually sometimes um, during the loving relationship we break up. Maybe that's lucky, you know. At least you have good memory, you have illusion of what it could be, what it might have been, what it would have been if she didn't love me or if I didn't leave her. But if you had the opportunity to live together for a long life, you know, and then no more romantic. Yeah. What? Tax bill, telephone bill, electric bill. Yeah, yeah, and then the children fees and all kind of things. And you know what? Actually, <laughs> I don't know what is really good, yeah? To stay together for all the time or just to break up in between in order to have a painful but romantic memory and illusion. <laughs> Anyhow, any choice has a price. So you take whatever it is. If you want to keep your relationship, it has a great price. You have to attend to your partner all the time. You have to sacrifice some of your personality your time, your freedom, your privacy, many other things in order to keep a relationship going on. Besides, even if you do that, you might not be able to keep it. Some people don't like that. Some people don't like a clinging partner. Some people don't like a too considerate a partner. Some people don't like a too good a partner. Some people like bad boys <laughs> or bad girls. It's just a little bit spicy, naughty, they like it. And if you're too conservative, yeah, too good, too sweet, too considerate, too uh, surrender to every uh, wish and desires of the partner, sometimes you will lose her or him. So you never know what ticks, <laughs> you never know what snaps, you know. Just take risk if you want. <laughs> but don't ask me how I can heal you and how I can prevent this. No medicine, all right? Take it or leave it. <laughs> Both are fun. <laughs> okay? But in America, life is a little bit more lonely. Hmm? Many people stay in America, they feel more lonely. Maybe the land is too big, population too small. And now that people don't produce that many children anymore, <laughs> we seem to get more lonely. So we like to have a partner to share interest or lonely time, things like that. But along with this pleasure comes a great responsibility and sacrifice. So you are the only one can decide whether it's worth to try, but no one can guarantee. So next time, if you fall in love again, you must know before, all right, that it might happen, might happen the same thing again, or it might happen worse. For example, like, okay, you're successful to, to get married, yeah? She didn't leave you, you, you did not leave her, and then you are married. But then later life go, you know? It's no more like the beginning. You must know everything before you start a loving relationship. But sometimes we know all this, but we could not help to uh, prevent it. Then it's okay, just enjoy while it lasts. That's what I say. And when it goes, goodbye. Yeah? It's painful, but let it be. Pain is also a kind of experience. Why do we reject it? Just, just see how it develops. 
Yeah, we know it's painful. All right, we get on with our life while the pain is still there, just like we get on with our life while the love is still there. Everything, we just take it as it is and don't dramatize it, don't make it worse and don't dwell on it. There are many other things, exciting things to do. In some of the previous life, I fell in love many times. Yeah, and it, it hurts because um, it hurts. <laughs> But then, uh, every time like that, I just carry on with my work, yeah? Okay, all right, all right, today I'm very hurt. I have a lot of pain because a lover has left me, but so what, I have a lot of things to do. Like in the morning, I must get up to what? And in noontime, I must do what? I, afternoon, I must see somebody, what? And evening, I must do what? You know what I mean? As you carry yourself into the daily routine and uh, devote yourself to the duty of the day, you find that every wound, every pain heals quickly. You still know it's there, but you don't let it overwhelm you because you stay calm. You, you just do your work and everything takes care of itself. The pain heals quicker than you think, quicker that way. And besides, because you're not careful, so you didn't see that the relationship normally wouldn't have lasted anyhow. If you look back, you see, the personality traits, you know, the clash, the conflicts, the difference of interest, you must look back and check up, <laughs> and you know that you have been blind all this time. It shouldn't have been <laughs> started anyhow, for example, like that. I think you have spoken enough. Now I'm on romance and love. <laughs> Okay, anything else? Thank you, Master. I am a medical student and I would like to ask a question about euthanasia. That's mercy killing. What's for, that for? Uh, you for get me into trouble? This is your job and all the doctors decide it. Huh? Uh, because I'm a medical do? student and so? probably in the future I will face that choice. Uh -huh. uh, Why? Do uh, they have the law that, like that in America? Is there a law here that you can uh, have mercy know, killing? I don't know, because I'm from Taiwan. And why, why am I responsible for all the countries? <laughs> the different law. There, hmm? are, uh, there are many kinds of mercy killing. I'm talking about the one that's uh, so-called passive mercy killing. For example, when a person is severely ill or injured, and he is, on, for example, on ventilator support, and there are no signs showing that he is still alive, except that he is still breathing on ventilator support and his heart is still beating. Sometimes people wake up after six months or six years. Mm -hmm. You know that. So it's hard for me to tell you which one to kill and which one to spare. Mm. <laughs> Very difficult, of course. So the families must, de must decide, the doctors must decide, yeah? and the patient as well, if he has any Consciousness, huh? If I were to tell you this uh, vegetable-like state is not worth uh, preserving, then how about those people who wake up after long coma? Yes? See, so what can I tell you? And suppose I were to tell you that uh, these are to be prolonged, but actually some people are prolong all their many, 25 years or something, but they have not waken up from the coma. So here I am again, you know. It's very difficult to judge. It is for the immediate family members uh, of the patient as well as the doctors. They must know oh, which case, all right, besides God will take care. Mm. Thank you, Master. You're welcome. There's so many problems in this world, huh? Hi, Master. Uh, the question is very short. Uh, what is God? because I don't have a clear conception of what God is. Uh, I have been studying like, physics, you know, I've I'm, I'm been trained as a student in like, studying material laws like 20 years from primary school to college. Then I know like, in this material world, there are certain um, physical laws, everything is governed by the physical laws. So it's God just the higher level universal laws and govern the spiritual you know, different spiritual levels, or it's God or something else. Can you, exp I mean, give some some inspiration <laughs> about what God is? 
I thought the question would be short. Right. <laughs> so you mean why God doesn't come to save the world? Is that right? No, I mean, I just don't have a clear conception what, what God is. Is God a person or is it a, just a universal law? Or is God a... a God is not to be described in this way. I don't think I can write many books <laughs> to describe about God. Actually, when you're asking me right now, I have no idea what God is. Somebody has any idea? No, huh? A loving master who doesn't eat meat. <laughs> he say a master who is loving doesn't eat meat. <laughs> Something like that. Oh my God. Um, actually, when we know God, that is when we don't know what God is. Before that, we think we know God this and that, God is love, God is justice, God is powerful, God is everything, mercy, God is blessing, but after maybe we know God, then we begin not to know Him. I mean, we, we cannot describe anymore. We just be it, you know? So it's very difficult. Why don't you just try our method and then everybody claim to know God afterwards, so try. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You see, just like a fish in the water, huh? A fish came to his mother and asked, Mother, what is sea, you know? What is the ocean? What is the water? So the mother said, <laughs> You are swimming in it. <laughs> you're living your life in it. You're born from water, and you're dying in water, and you have your existence in water. Water is surrounding you. You are from water. You are one with the water. That's what it is with God, I think. Yeah? If that can be clear enough, I am not sure even. At the moment, I have difficulty in explaining to people what God is, and what is a Tao, what is... <laughs> Uh, practice and all this, I have more trouble than I used to, to do. At the moment, I think all the, the, the fellow practitioners can explain better than I do. Is that not so? I think so. I think you, you explain better than me. So, it's funny. You think I go everywhere and preach to people all the time? Or, for example, if I go to the president of Dominica or the prime minister, I would preach to them, please eat vegetarian. <laughs> no. I didn't even give them book or anything. <laughs> but the disciples, they, they thought about that. They bring some books. I said, oh, good that you have some, because <laughs> I never thought about it. You know what I gave them? Sometimes, you know, like men's stuff, you know, tie, couplings, things like that. Or for women, I give ring, you know, tax-free from the airport, thing like that. <laughs> yes, or, or the, the duty-free gifts, you know. I would buy these and give to them, and that's all there is. Or, or if the country needs some uh, contribution, you know, for the children or for the old people or sick people, then I would uh, offer some donation. That's all. But you know what? Three people ate vegetarian. Only three days I met three, and three had started vegetarian from nowhere. <laughs> I didn't even say anything. They just saw me eat vegetarian. And that's it. They said, okay, from today we begin vegetarian too. And said and done. Really like that. Some of the benefits of a vegetarian diet lowers blood pressure, lowers cholesterol levels, reduces type 2 diabetes, prevents stroke conditions, reverses atherosclerosis, reduces heart disease risk 50%, reduces heart surgery risk 80%, prevents many forms of cancer, stronger immune system, increases life expectancy up to 15 years, higher IQ, saves 70% of a total cost of 40 trillion US dollars for reducing global warming, uses 4.5 times less land to grow food, conserves up to 70% clean water, saves 80% of the cleared Amazonian rainforest from animal grazing. A solution for world hunger. Free up 3.4 billion hectares of land. Free up 760 million tons of grain every year, or half the world's grain supply. 
consumes one-third fossil fuels of those used for meat production, reduces pollution from untreated animal waste, maintains cleaner air, saves 4.5 tons of emissions per U.S. household per year, stop 80% of global warming, plus more. Save your life. Be veg. Go green. But what I mean is I don't preach anymore. I cannot preach anymore. I just feel not natural anymore. I don't know why. I just give people anything except the preaching. And sometimes when the followers, the attendants, you know, giving them books and all that, you know, sample booklet, I come to take you home and something like that. <laughs> I felt kind of embarrassed, <laughs> you know. I don't know why. I just became so shy, you know. Perhaps I still can go out and, and, and give lecture when it's really necessary, but I just cannot imagine I would do that. Not like I was so enthusiastic before, you know. I, I, I feel more natural to talk. Now I feel more natural not to talk. I was sometimes because you demand and you love so much, you like to hear me talk something. So I'm also trying to <laughs> to please you. Otherwise, it's very difficult for me just to stand here and do nothing, <laughs> and difficult for you to accept that. Never mind. If you have question, then it is good for me so that I can answer you. Dear Master, I have waited for you for four years already. Since the time I was in Malaysia, refugee came. I have known you by chance. Because in that time, I admire you very much. You have done a lot of good things for people in this earth, especially for the Vietnamese refugee. Uh, truly to say, I have a master inside my mind for seven years until now. He appears every time when I, when I stay at, when I live in the daytime, even when I sleep. He come to me every time, and he called me to come to see you for many important things. But I cannot help you here because it is very serious for my master inside. So can I, can I write a letter to you on, uh, on next uh, Saturday or Sunday? Because, because for me, I have, I have tried to come to see you for many times. I come from Canada. I have tried to come to Taiwan to save you four times in Taiwan, but I couldn't save you there. Why? And until now, because at that time I, I was not your, your disciple. Oh, but everyone, regardless, disciple yeah. or not, can see me. Just, I don't know why you cannot. If I'm there, anyone can come see me. Yeah. Sunday so, open. So today I'm very happy because I'm become your disciple. So I'm... Uh, I try my best to write many important things from okay. my master You're inside right. my mind. You're so right. can I can I send it to you on next Saturday or Sunday? Sure, you can. Because it's very important. I cannot tell you. Okay, please okay. write down and give it me on Sunday if yeah. I'm there. Okay. Thank you very much, Martin. You're welcome. Master, I don't know if this question is appropriate or not. I have a question about physical pain. Yes. Okay, I have a lot of stiffness in my knees, and I also have a hip that's, I can almost not walk on it. And I just wanted to ask you if you could suggest some modality, or is there some way, what should I do? Should I use acupressure, acupuncture, therapy? I don't know if this is an appropriate question for you, but I have to ask it, because it, it's really getting in the way of my life, and I would like to get rid of it. Did you try acupuncture and all that? No, I haven't tried acupuncture. Mm. Did you try exercising? What did the doctor well, tell you? Well, I do you? exercise. I swim, I, I, mm -hmm. I walk, I work out. Um, but it's, it's just getting worse and worse, and, and mm -hmm. um, I don't know what to do. And I'm, I'm just kind of, I guess, asking out of de desperation, because I don't know what to do. And I thought, well, possibly you can answer my question. Possibly you can, that's okay, I just... I don't have to always answer in words. I understand. Mm. Okay. okay. Thank you. Probably. 
probably you, your sickness will be gone soon when the time comes. <laughs> Try to meditate more if you can, all right? And keep your knees warm, your hips warm. Don't expose to draft and breeze, you know, through the door and things like that. Be careful where you sit. Huh? And rub some sesame oil on the painful part three times a day. That probably will help you. Okay? And meditate. Pray. All right? Recite the holy names and rub it on. Don't, don't rub too hard. Just so massage so that the oil will sink inside and try to uh, change a little bit diet for a while, like you eat some of the uh, whole wheat, whole meal, yeah? S rice or wheat, whole meal. Whole meal, wheat, yes. Because I have uh, some vitamin B and things like that, it's just good for you. Or take some extra vitamin B, okay? Or take some yeast, yeah? That will help you also. Mm, and take some calcium. But have to ask the doctor the dose, yeah? Too much calcium also no good. Try. All right, brother? Take some more vitamin, okay? But with all that, and I think uh, it will be gone soon, mm? as well, that with meditation. We have to take both, you know, f physical help and spiritual help, yeah? And uh, pray to the Master Power, okay? Welcome to California, Master. Would you please talk about courage? Why? I don't know. <laughs> I just want to hear you talk about courage. But for what particular reason that you need this? I'm, I'd like to hear what you have to say about courage because I have fears. Of what? Oh, depends on the day. Ghost? <laughs> no, ghost. No. No ghost. What kind of fear do you have? Having a mission on the planet. Mission, mission. on the planet. Mm -hmm. So why are you fearful? I don't know exactly what it is. If you don't know, then how do you know you have a mission? That's what I want to know. Okay, then when it comes, you know. <laughs> Before it comes, no need fearing, all right? It might never come, okay? <laughs> Let's deal with it when it comes. Huh? Don't hear people say that you have mission and you have mission. Everybody has a mission. Do you think we come here for fun? <laughs> I don't think so. Pastor, I'm honored to be here. Me too. <laughs> and I want to take this opportunity to address everybody that's here. I'm a new disciple of yours. You've turned my life around 360 degrees. I need... God bless us. I need to inform the people here that you are a supreme master. I'm a little embarrassed with some of the questions. I know you're very tired. No, it's all right. It's okay. I'm not really tired. Well, the world has waited thousands of years for you, and... I feel like I've got, I've won the lottery in the cosmic uh, sky. <laughs> I and, think they like you. <laughs> and I want everybody here not to miss this opportunity. Please, don't miss this opportunity. There are no accidents. You've been led here, and this is a very, very special night for you. Please, please. Thank you. Thank you. If it benefits you, this is yourself who helps yourself. That is good. I'm an instrument, and I'm very happy to hear that the instrument works. <laughs> yes, Master, um, I hope this is not a ridiculous question, but... It's all right, don't worry. Um, 
when I meditate, I get I can't eat tofu, and I miss a lot of the good food that <laughs> that you have. I can't eat tofu, and I I uh, can't eat wheat, right? You cannot eat tofu. I'm allergic. So when I meditate, I get really, really cold, really, really cold. Yes. And I don't know what to, I've, I've been trying to mix the grains and the beans, but I don't know what to do to get, the, I'm afraid I'm not getting the proper protein because I get really, really cold. Okay, know? I understand. So what would you say? It's true, true. If you don't eat enough nutrition, you get cold in the night too. Uh, don't have enough energy. What else can you eat? You know, vegetarian harm and all that, can you eat? I can't have like a lot of spices, I can't have the wheat, I can't have the tofu. I, you know, I pray to you a lot because I'm a new initiate. I say as I go on and meditate more and more, maybe, you know, uh, my body will be able to take it, you know. Can somebody be allergic to tofu? Yes? Oh God, then we are in both in trouble. <laughs> Even if tofu you cannot eat, what kind of bad karma can that be? Oh, it's impossible. How do I solve the problem of this world? Even tofu we cannot eat. How about the, uh, how, you know, not directly tofu, but you know, the processed protein, like into ham, you know, vegetarian ham, sausage, you see, try, huh? A lot of the food that I'm seeing now, since I've been initiated, I have never seen, you know. Yes. It look, everything looks so good, you know, I feel deprived a lot. Yes. Tofu is not the only thing that we can eat, so just leave out that and eat other stuff. And maybe eat a little bit of tofu at a time, see how it reacts. And if, if you can, and continue. Okay, sometimes you are only allergic for a certain period of time. And maybe after you meditate for a while, your allergy has been minimized. So you have to always test the water. Okay, honey? Thank yeah? you, Master. I wish you luck. Yeah, I wish you can eat a lot of tofu later. <laughs> because it's very sad. It's very sad to hear that a person has tried his best already and turned to vegetarian and still has obstacle. You know, it's just very sad. I have sympathy for you and I will pray for you. I wish you luck. Okay? Good evening, Master. I feel very honored to be with you tonight. I'm honored, um, too. I wanted to speak because I had many allergies myself, mm -hmm. and I have worked with people who have. And um, what he can, there are many other grains, um, rice being excellent, um, also quinoa and other grains that he can mix with the smaller lentils are a higher, warmer energy. Oh, I see. And if he includes things like ginger and cayenne, um, ginger especially, but cayenne may be too heavy, but the ginger will warm the blood. Um, there are many uh, other grains that he can... Oh, help. good. Now you can work with her. Both of you, <laughs> open an allergy clinic. That's it. <laughs> God bless you, Master. Yes, yes true. A tofu is not the only protein that we, you know, we should depend on. There are all, all kinds of beans and nuts, they have a lot of protein. But tofu is nice, it's pity you cannot eat. You will, huh? You will. Try, continue. <laughs> all right. Sometimes you don't eat tofu alone, you know, you poach in sesame oil or something. Um, there are many high energy foods, um, and as she mentioned, nuts, seeds are very high, uh, sesame, things like that. And if you make sure that you get a balance of any kind of grain plus a nut, seed, lentil, or legume, mm. seaweeds and all that, seaweeds, and have it every day, um, and mm. add things like now we like go down to food. Will warm the blood. <laughs> there are things that will warm the blood, like ginger, will help to keep you warm. Yeah, uh, see that? You have an expert there. And look at her, how allergic she has been. <laughs> okay, so mother, you will teach him how to eat and how to behave and what to do. Okay? Anyone else with allergy can come and study with her and see what you can do. Sometimes a combination of food 
uh, break away or neutralize the allergy. But you must know with what you are allergic to. Yeah? All right. Yes, yes, yes. What don't we have here in this world? Even tofu makes trouble. And it's impossible to imagine that even harmless tomatoes or tofu can give us trouble. Oh God, I think we better quit this world and that's the very right decision. <laughs> Master, I'm a beginner and uh, I, I consider myself I get somewhat old now at 60 years old and I have I've lived a I think a good life I I'd like to to help people but I want myself to be more enlightened but I'm having some difficulty moving to a higher level and I don't seem to have very strong motivation I listen to the tapes and I read the magazine and I I come here and uh I I don't know that I am, I think I am expecting something from you. You are the first teacher that I, I have. Should I try to reach a higher level of, of awareness and a higher level of... Uh, Did you see anything here, anything? I, I see a lot and I hear, I hear a lot, but... Um, <laughs> but you want more? I, I want more and I want it, want it I guess, quicker, I guess. I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, we can only digest a certain amount of thing at a time. All right, brother? I know your age is pressing you, but don't let that bother. People begin at 70. There was a Sikh master, huh? He came to his uh, guru at the age of 70, and everybody looked out upon him because he was a very humble and old and he worked very dedicatedly like a servant to his master and as a servant in the house as well. So not many people look up on him. But when his master died, the spiritual mantle fell upon this person, old person, and not to the younger one, not to the daughters and sons and all that expected people. So you see, you're not very old. It's all right, take it easy. <laughs> you see a lot and hear a lot and you still complain, what shall I do? <laughs> yes, we just uh, take it easy, we have give and take still, huh? And uh, when you are ready, you be gone. Yeah, I mean, you be gone, God will call you. Or if He wants you to serve mankind, He will bestow the opportunity upon you. Just do your best every day, meditate. All right, brother? Hmm? Okay. You look very young still. Your teeth are still intact and your hair is still there. <laughs> you know, I saw uh, when I went to Dominica, but there were two, Dominic Republic and Dominica. So they get confused, all the males going, you know, back and forth in these two countries all the time. I told them to change the name, simple. But they say it's not that simple because <laughs> they talk about that for ten years already, but that didn't change. So I say, well, it's very important if if you get all the males mixed up, yeah, all the secrets, you know, national secret, they go back and forth to different countries. It's no good. Better change it. But then again, who am I to tell them what to do? I just suggest. So the uh, ex-president say, well, he. He will uh, kind of try and <laughs> to, to, you know, suggest strongly again. That's Dominic Republic is this and something else. And Dominica is another one. It's a little bit near San Martin. And uh, it's more undiscovered. It's very beautiful. It's not yet spoiled. And the trees are big like that. And it's so high. And the rare birds and over 300 rivers, yes, and the shapes look like Taiwan. It's funny, you know, like Formosa. And the people there are very nice. When I went there, the president was pretty old, but he didn't think he is. He's 74, but he doesn't look a day older than 73. <laughs> 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 he thinks he's very young and he's very enthusiastic, very energetic. He came to the airport to meet us. 
casually, even though it's an ex-president, but just last time he stepped out just because his age, he's been there for 10 years. Uh, president for 10 years means continue many terms. And uh, the president now is also, you know, a little bit older than you. So what do you want, huh? Do you want me to list all the senior citizens in the world to encourage you? <laughs> Yes, and this president, the ex-president of Dominica, he was so pure, like a saint. He's like a father, you know. He came to the airport to greet me. He didn't even know me. He just hear people say that, I'm certain, certain, certain. Then he came to the airport, I'm certain, certain. Then he came to the At five o'clock, he came to the airport to send me off again. Five o'clock in the morning. You don't even wake up to think of me yet. He, he woke up and he, he came and saw us off at the airport. He didn't have to do that, but he did it. He said, because he loved me so much, he respect, and he just want to show it. Yes. And woe to you if you tell him he's old. <laughs> he will defend. <laughs> he says he's very young. And his skin is very smooth, and you know, his eye is still very sparkling, and he speaks with such a clarity and wisdom and such a warmth, you know, human love in his heart. It's fantastic, you wouldn't think he's an old man. Yes, so don't make yourself old, otherwise I feel old too. I'm just about twenty years younger than you. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Mr. Qinghai, I'm very grateful for your teaching and I'm very excited to see you here today, tonight. Um, I just have a question about love. I, I'm asking you to teach me how do we give our love to people around us, mm -hmm. especially when we have our own judgment, when we think some people are not good. I, I know it's not right to make judgment, to think somebody else is not good as, as they supposed mm -hmm. to be. So. I'm just asking you to teach me how to give our love to people around us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody know better, huh? Do you know how? Yes, say. Easy to say, huh? She say you forgive yourself, and then you, it's easy to forgive someone else. Well, that's the advice. <laughs> Take it or leave it. <laughs> it's difficult, it's difficult. Just try your best, brother, okay? Try your best, all right? But allow yourself also some room to grow and to be natural, yeah? You cannot always force yourself to love someone that you cannot love. And sometimes they are unreasonable, let's face it, huh? And sometimes the bad karma from the the previous life come back often. And sometimes the maya try to test our endurance and our patience and our sympathy and all that. It's difficult to live in this world. So just try your best and allow yourself some room to grow, all right? Don't just uh, demand too much on yourself. We are human yet, okay? <laughs> it's very difficult to deal with people, huh? even though we like to be loving and kind. It's difficult when the personality clashes, and when we're in a hurry, when we must rush to do things, and other people just try just not to help or try to slow down and just try not to, like, not to understand, pretend not to understand what we want, nothing like that. It's very difficult. Don't worry about that. Sooner or later we will all gone, love or not love. <laughs> Very difficult, very difficult. Huh? But when we live with other people, if we want their company, we must just be patient. There's no other choice. Otherwise, just quit, live alone. But that is weakness. That's weakness. Anyone who lives alone is weak. Yeah? They cannot deal with a lot of people, so they live alone. It's a weakness. It's not a saintly quality. So don't be proud if you are a monk or something or live a secluded life. This is nothing, really big deal. Mm? If you can live in the world, deal with other people, 
and became or remain a saint at the same time. That is better, okay? But it's difficult. <laughs> I think you can do it. All of you are saints here because you live with people every day, you deal with them, you love them, and you work and you serve family at the same time. And you can deal with it. Huh? Master, how long will you stay with us here? I don't know yet. Sometimes I like to stay long, you know. A long time. I don't know yet. <laughs> we, we want you so much to say. I like to, but there are many things I don't want to tell you right now. There are a lot of things that are waiting for me, so I'm not sure. I would have loved to stay here, okay. but there are many worldly situations, you know, affect my schedule and my work. Sometimes the, the karma of sentient beings change, you know, from one minute to the next. Really like that. One minute, say, okay, next minute is kill, and then I have to work accordingly too, yeah? Mm, so there are situations I cannot tell you at the moment. Uh, I will tell you when I have time and when I have the opportunity, okay? At the moment I cannot promise how long. So if you see me today, you know today. And if you see me next day, you know next day. That will be best. Thank you. All right? Thank you. Gosh. How can somebody stay here and work in another place at the same time? I mean physically. Then it would be good. There are many urgent, pressing matters, sometimes always run around, you know, around me and demanding my attention. Sometimes I cannot even tell you, because it's concerning political situation, uh, you know, other countries and things like that, I cannot always tell you in advance. Sometimes when it's finished, I can tell you. Yeah. Sometimes if I tell you I go to see the president of Dominica, sometimes I might not be able to see him even. Sometimes they change the karma, you know. It's so fast. That's why I better keep quiet and don't say anything until I have done. Yes, so now um, I'll tell you, okay, in a few days. What day is today? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh my God, there's a long way to Tipperary. <laughs> four days. In four days many things happened. But nevertheless, if you go to San Jose Center, all this can go to San Jose Center? Yes. I don't think so. Can? Can do, huh? If it's not raining, can. I hate to promise you, but I don't really know Sunday if I'm here or not. I suppose we are, I was going to be here, but it looks like the situation will press me in some other corner of the world. You try your luck, okay? Okay. I wish that I would be here on Sunday because I want to rest here for a while. I've been running for the last uh, many weeks and every day, you know, pressing schedule. Even now, when I tell you, oh, I go to see the president of Dominica or to see the, the prime minister, just, just stop, very easy. But it's not easy while I was doing it. You know what I mean? I just don't know why things will happen, make it not the way it is, and uh, that I could not sleep sometime in the night. And besides, I have to take care of all the things, you know, not only uh, the uh, initiate in America, but in Taiwan, in China, etc., etc. I'm always on the phone. And sometimes I cannot sleep because of the phone, see, to waiting or talking. And uh, so something like when I'm in Dominica, the phone doesn't always work the way you want it. There's only two outside lines is always occupied, for example, like that. You know? And even money doesn't work there. <laughs> yes, something like that. But Dominica is already very good. It's English phone system. Sometimes I go to somewhere else, it's very difficult. And when I try to talk to Thailand or Cambodia, my God, it's like you talk to the moon. Yeah, talk to the astronaut on the moon. The line is always uh, waning and waving, and you can hardly make a conversation. You have to make it again and again, and that wastes a lot of time. And sometimes I'm in time pressing, you know. This is terrible. So I just don't know how to explain to you. I really wish I would be here on Sunday. But at the moment, I'm not sure. I'll probably be sure in a few days. Okay? Anything we can do to help you? Anything at all? Well, I don't know. Just pray, just meditate. Pray. Pray meditate. And hope that the world will become better. 
and I have to take care of what, what is the most, most urgent at that moment, even though sometimes I have to sacrifice the longing of other people. I, I don't know how to explain my work for you. Sometimes I really go through many nights without sleeping, just because of all these situations going on. And then other people make demand on me as well. You see, like new acquaintance, yes, a new uh, country, yeah? Then uh, sometimes they invite me to see their leaders, yeah? And say, please come and bless our country, thing like that. Or sometimes they come and see what I can do there, for example, huh? or for the future, or just because the God says so. <laughs> I'm always busy, believe it or not. I can hardly believe that there are such a person who is so small and who is so busy. <laughs> and if you ask me what I'm busy at, it's difficult to tell you. I forget also. Whatever I have finished, I forget. I, I don't write memo, and I, I can't remember what, what it was that kept me so busy. It's just anything. Okay, anyhow, forget it. As long as I live, I work. <laughs> I see you, I see you perhaps. I cannot promise Sunday, but please do come. Besides, if you come, if I'm not there, you meditate for world peace. It will not do you any harm. But if you think uh, I might not be there and you might waste your time, and it's up to you, okay? If I'm here, I'll be Sunday for sure. It's just I, I'm worried that I might have to rush somewhere. But I will wait for the karma to, you know, to change. Sometimes they, they change because of, of their idea. Inside, if their thought change, the situation change. That's why anything predicting in the future hardly ever <laughs> come, uh, you know, accurate. Because it changed with the people's thought pattern. So don't blame those clairvoyant people that they're talking uh, nonsense or they predict something that do not come true. Sometimes it's like that. It's supposed to be like that. But then the people change because of their strong will. They change because they have become more moral. They change because they have repented their sins and vow to improve. Then the situation changes immediately. There's no need for God or anybody to explain this situation. It's really like that. That's why if you ask me tomorrow what happened, I will not tell you because I don't know. <laughs> and the only stupid one that would tell you tomorrow what happened, maybe for one individual, but only if that individual stay in that pattern of living standards, you know, if he changed. Even one thought of uh, improvement changed his destiny. So the destiny is in our hand. Huh? Make sure that you control your destiny and bring it into a desired, a uh, state of uh, of life or a living standard. You you do control your destiny. Of course, we are influenced by karma, but that's why we have to struggle, huh? And have to 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 decide what to do. We have to keep always our mind positive, and use the meditation power to make this positive thinking became true. If you don't meditate, if you don't have the power of creative. Almighty force inside. Doesn't matter how positively you think, it doesn't come true. Just don't listen to people say, Oh, I think positive, and then everything is positive. Nonsense. Can it happen? If I think I have money, I will. Positively, I will have money. Think, try, try. <laughs> you don't have to work. <laughs> Just think positively that you will have money and tell me how much. <laughs> is that right? Yes. Not thinking alone. Power, the backup power must be strong. Where does the power come from? From the Most High. And you get that through your meditation, your recharging. So don't just sit there and think, must meditate too. See? Just like we think about money doesn't help, we must have a bank account. And the bank account must be full of money. Huh? At least it's cover the check, huh? So anyhow, ah, yes, you know everything already. If you come Sunday, if I'm here, I come see you. I hope I will be here, and I, I like to be here, because I'm tired. I also want to rest a few days here. I don't want to rush somewhere else at the moment, but maybe I have to.
Okay? If I know it in advance, I will tell you. All right? If I don't know, just come Sunday and maybe you see me. If not, you pray. All right? I'm honest with you. I don't try to cheat you into coming to group meditation, even though group meditation is good for you. But because you ask me whether I'm there or not, I honestly don't know at the moment. I plan to be here for a long time, at least a few weeks. I have a rest. But you know the situation of the world. Maybe I have to rush. So, you know that, huh? If I don't see you again, forgive me, understand me, and we'll see each other again some other time. If you do, then nothing to say. Okay? If I'm here Sunday, we barbecue and we play together and we sing and we do something. I can only say that I love you, I'm proud of you, and because of you I continue to work. If you have not improved and you did not give me feedback, you know, that has helped you, I would have quit, I would not continue. So actually, I thank you. Hmm? So good night. <laughs> <laughs>